A quick word about using music in training. First thing about music, make sure you've got a license. This is my license for PPL, which is for UK use. Make sure you meet your own local requirements. If you are using music without a license, you're breaking the law. Once you've got your license, I tend to use this, a small set of easily portable speakers and a small iPod. This will contain over a thousand songs, more than enough to cope with a training environment. I also grade my music, not by taste or preference, but by the neurological or brain impact that it has on the delegates. I have five categories of music. At the top level, I have the high energy type music for delegates going into a room or out of a room at coffee break. I then come down and have music that has vocals on it and has quite a bit of variation. That's when they're walking about and in quite animated discussion. The next one down is when they're discussing as a group. So they're sitting at the tables discussing, come down a bit more, and this is when they're thinking, either low-level discussion or where they're reading or planning. And for music there, it needs to be probably instrumental and with low variation, also played quite quietly. And then the final one is quite the extreme music of very gentle, very quiet music uh, that they can just have as, as background. So think carefully about the music. It's not just your preferences. It's the impact that it's going to have on the delegate. And you can go through one album and different bits of music can fit into different categories. So it's a little bit of work to categorise them, but experiment, see how it goes, and you can always change. On this particular training course, another thing we're using is table manipulatives. And this gives delegates an excuse to do something with their hands. Some people will scribble or doodle. Some people, particularly those that are more physically active, like playing with something with their hands. So one of the things we've got here are little stress balls. They're in the forms of brains. We've told a story as to why the brains are there and how the training works into the brain. So they'll take them away and have them on their desks and remember the training. So they also act as an anchor. And I've watched delegates over the last two days playing with these as they're talking. Another thing we're using on this particular course are metal manipulatives here. They're just puzzles. And the learning point of these puzzles was they're easy when you know how but when you don't know how, they're really difficult. And that's very similar to the course that we're doing, which is about web essentials, about search engine optimization, and about getting email marketing right. It's easy when you know how, it's not when you uh, don't know how. And so we're encouraging them to take these home because it's easy when you know how. Every time they take them home, they will remember what we've done. And this one, if I can get this right, look at that. How easy was that? On the other hand, this one here is absolutely impossible. And I've been trying for two days to do it and can't. Here's an example of a good training room and all around us we have delegates at work. It's a very large space and so it enables delegates to fill the space, put stuff on the floor, move around rather than stay rooted to their desks. There's a lot of natural light and facing out that way we have the Swiss Alps and Swiss Meadows. But notice I've got the delegates and the screen facing that way so they're not just gazing out of the window. But with the natural light, the good view when we do break, and the space to move on the floor, that's very useful. Also look through here, the tables are interesting. There's things on the wall. This here is a specific site that we've been looking at. We also have other things that are relevant on the wall over here. Some of the things that we're looking at on this course, we look here at usability and accessibility of websites, and this map is something that's been in the manuals and something that's been up on the screen. So there's instant recognition just with this pattern of what we're talking about. This graph, which is a graph between control of what's on the website and the risk, is again something that we've looked at in the manuals, we've explored, and we've put it up on the screen. Over here, we're looking at the metrics, how we measure different parts of our website usage and getting those measurements to be the right measurements to achieve what we want them to do. So these are very big, they're very visual, they're all around the room and they fit into things that they've already seen from the manual and they've already seen um, on the PowerPoint. We've also got down here a whole load of laptops where the delegates here are using these laptops to explore various sites, look at the usability, look if the sites are using these various online tools and have an idea of the sort of measurements or metrics that they would use for those sites. So very important for the delegates to know what they're going to get in a training setup. Here we have 
the outcomes of the course. This particular course is the essentials of working on websites. And we're saying here, this is what the course is about. There's a knowledge part, an intellectual part. There's an engagement and an emotional part. And there's a practical guide what they're actually going to do as a result. This poster on the wall, very prominent. And it's also in the delegate manuals. But that's not enough. So in addition to saying to the delegates, this is our agenda, these are the outcomes that we want, I've asked them, I want your specific agendas. You are investing two days of your time. What is it you're going to do as a result of it? And they've come out with the agendas that are here on the wall. As a trainer, one of the things I've got to do is make sure that those two match. And in this case, and almost all cases, they certainly do. These things here can make big differences to the delegates' learning. This triangle is produced by the National Training Laboratories in Bethel, Maine, and it shows how much content is remembered by a delegate 24 hours after a piece of learning. So at the top of the triangle, if I stand there and talk to them for a day, the chances are, if I do my job well, they might just remember 5% of it. But part of our job as trainers is to try and draw them down in the triangle. So lecturing isn't good enough. We need to get them reading, adding to that, we need to get audio visual. We need to then get demonstration, have them in discussion groups, move into practice by doing. This is where a business simulation does the job. They're then putting what they're doing in discussion into practice, albeit in a safe and a simplified environment. And a key thing for any training what are you going to do back at work tomorrow? If they're able to put things immediately into use, the chances are they're going to remember a significant amount of the training. And that gives us good return on investment and that builds up good practice training. On five separate occasions during this training course, delegates have had a time out. And with the time out, which has been five minutes, they're then individually looking back over the, each section that they've looked at. And each section they're looking for what is it I am going to do differently and what is it others going, are going to do differently? So specific requirements for action in those five minutes. I play the same piece of music. In this particular case, it's Packerbell's Canon in D. The same piece of music for each of those five events. That measures the five minutes. When the five minutes are up, each of the groups of delegates in tables then have to agree what their key learning is. And each table comes out with three key learnings. Those key learnings then go up on the learning wall. So we've got the delegates working on their own, firstly, to generate their action. Secondly, the delegates are talking about their learning and agreeing which is the key one. And thirdly, we've got a very visible demonstration of the learning that stays throughout the day on this, the learning wall. <laughs>